Hello everybody and welcome to my Heirloom Organic Vegetable Garden Series for October the 3rd. Okay, so today um, it's not looking good on the rutabaga. It looks like uh, it's a, we got a rot situation. I'm, uh, it looks like I pulled it right off actually. The, uh, the ones that are not rotting are uh, starting to grow again and they've got splits and you know the moths did them in and it's not a good situation. I'm, uh, I'm not uh, impressed the way they turned out this year but we had a you know we had curveballs we didn't count on you know like this this rot situation you know they uh, the moss got in here and just destroyed them there might be one maybe two in here that are not screwed I'm not holding my breath on it they've uh, still got to get hit with some serious frost before they sweeten up which I don't think they're gonna last that long I think they're in a slow decay situation now my snap peas which you know I had a, a failed uh, um, uh, germination on them I lost for words for a second there guys um, and I had to replant and replant and I found out later that uh, snap peas have a terrible uh, shelf life on the on the on the actual seed so I'm letting these guys go completely till they die and then I'm going to hang the plants up in the uh, back barn and, and dry them and, and harvest the seeds because these guys did uh, you know produce for me and I'm going to get them now Chris at Incredible Seeds says that he's going to mail me new ones on the, this year's crop so I'm still waiting for them in the mail. They haven't shown up yet. Hopefully he didn't forget. Now, parsnips. Um, I have no idea what we're gonna get here. Now there's still another month of growing here because parsnips like this cooler weather. And actually they like getting hit with some hard frost. Now they are getting, you know, a pretty good size, but they're like a month behind. You know, considering I had to replant these and you know, and this was like a thousand seeds to get this many plants, it was pretty bad turn out actually but that's another plant that I found out that the seeds have a terrible shelf life they don't last worth crap but at least I'm gonna get some parsnips uh, you know I might not get a big freezer full or I might get maybe a couple bags but I um, I really love parsnips especially these they're so good but if I don't succeed this year I know next year well actually this winter I'm gonna reorder seeds because I, I need my parsnips I uh, there these are these parsnips are so tasty they're nice and sweet after they get hit with frost. Okay, so now my pepper situation, absolute right off, next to nothing. Uh, I pulled a couple peppers off. Total, uh, it, it just, it didn't work out this year. Bad situation on the peppers. Actually really bad. They didn't flower. There was next to no flowers. So because there was no flowers, there was, like, I'm not kidding you guys. I got four peppers off it. That was it. And there's a couple of red ones on there right now, but not like my first year when I grew them. So that, that's a situation and a half that I'm not too happy with. Okay, so now my tomatoes. Because of what's happening in my life and everything has been going wrong, I haven't had a chance to uh, do my tomato. I still have about 30 liters of tomatoes frozen from 2013, so it's not the end of the world. But uh, they took forever to uh, ripen. And we've been getting some pretty cold nights here. Actually, we've had frost three nights out of the last five. So the plants, I'm surprised the plants are even uh, green. Usually uh, tomato plants get hit with frost, it, uh, they instantly, the leaves shrivel up and die. So they must not be getting uh, frost down here on the garden, which is strange because the hot tub in the morning is covered in frost. I've had a couple tomatoes off it, not a lot of tomato action this year. As far as me eating tomatoes, but that's just because everything here, uh, you know, things are going on here. Behind the scenes, guys. Now, today is uh, harvest by my, uh, <laughs> I guess we call it the, the hybrid plant, uh, the zucchini spaghetti squash, uh, I don't know what it is, but the frost uh, and a combination of that mold appeared and, and, and it wreaked, uh, wreaked havoc uh, on them. So I'm going to pull all the, uh, the, the fruit off it today and get it on the back deck and try to dry it out in the sun. I'm going to have some for supper tonight. The last time I had some I found it was too wet, so we'll see what tonight's like. But there's a fair amount in here, so I'm going to dig them out. Fill the wheelbarrow load up and I'll give you a shot of, like there's a lot in here. I can't believe the amount that it grew. It was, it's, it's, uh, but it's gonna be interesting what I'm gonna end up making of it here. I don't know. I think uh, the only way I'm gonna be able to preserve these because there's so much zucchini in them, I gotta cook them and freeze them. Like cook it, bag it, you know, because I think if I leave them, they're just gonna rot. Because uh, spaghetti squash only lasts about six weeks in the back shed. Uh, and that's you know with a hardened dried shell on it so I and zucchini doesn't last long so and these guys are looking more like zucchini than they are spaghetti squash so I'm gonna harvest them and I'll give you a shot of how much I got I'd say over 200 maybe 250 pounds 
unbelievable the amount that was hidden uh, in, underneath the leaves. Look at that. And they're massive. I, I, it's going to be really interesting what they taste like tonight. How they cook up. Because like I said, you know, the, the first one I had was really watery. So I'm just going to put them on the back deck, wash them off and dry them off and do my test cook. Figure out what I'm going to do with them because I know for a fact that they won't be able to, uh, you know, they won't last six weeks in the back. Plus, there's no way I can eat that many in six weeks, even if I eat them every day. That's just nuts what they grew. But you know what? This year, guys, um, when I was actually just now, when I was pulling them, I was thinking about this year, this spring specifically, when I killed myself in the swamp digging all that duck feces out, you know, it was like 50 wheelbarrow loads, and I was just dying doing it. I'm telling you, uh, that just shows you, you know, the effort you put in at the beginning, what you get at the end, and everything this year that I have grown, you know, every harvest that I have done, has been awesome uh, the, that has survived other than you know, my rutabaga going down the tubes and you know things not germinating but anything that grew grew lots so I'm gonna go put them on the back deck wash them off and get them uh, in position to dry well you know considering I think I planted like 11 seeds that's a pretty good haul maybe it was 12 seeds I put in that uh, hump that's crazy what I got out of it and you know when your hands are already cold from being out here in the wind the best thing you can do is fill up a wheelbarrow load uh, of uh, cold water to wash them. Oh man, my hands are frozen right now. So I'm gonna, uh, tonight, I'm gonna try them and uh, we'll you know, I'll have a better idea tomorrow how I'm gonna deal with this. Because I don't think they're gonna last like spaghetti squash does. Even if they did last six weeks, I've gotta do something. I've gotta, uh, I gotta process them some way and freeze them. And I know uh, cooking them is the only way I'm gonna be able to freeze them. So I got a lot of cooking ahead of me. A hell of a lot of cooking, actually. What a great harvest. And they actually didn't taste bad, uh, the last batch I had, but it was too watery. So tonight we'll tell uh, if they're uh, dried out a little bit more. Completely different texture inside, guys. The, uh, the First of all, no next to no moisture. Uh, I just took this out and it's actually, I can't believe uh, the consistency of it. It's nothing like when I first tried it. Um, it's very, very dense, uh, very hard, actually, just like uh, spaghetti squash, not soft like zucchini. So. Um, it's going to be really interesting here what it's going to be like uh, when I, once I cook it. But uh, I'll, uh, I wasn't going to show this on the video today because if, I believe it or not I already did the garden video so I'm going to add this on to the end. Uh, I'm just shocked how the, one, the color of it is not white, it's got a yellow tinge to it and, which is more like spaghetti squash. But, it's, uh, you know, but it looks like you know, zucchini, bizarre stuff and very dense and hard, very, very hard. It's going to be interesting what it's like uh, when I cook it. Which I will show you when I get it out of the oven. Cooked it for 50 minutes at 350. Now let's just see how it is. Oh, it's like spaghetti squash. I'm really actually shocked. This is nothing like the first time I had it. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely giving the spaghetti. Oh, there's my 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 lamb. It's ready. Of course, it's red hot here. Yeah, and it even smells like spaghetti squash. It's got a little bit of a butternut a butternut smell to it. Well, I've got to come up with a way of cooking all of this stuff to freeze it. I gotta think of something. But I know one thing, until I think of something, I'm going to be eating uh, spaghetti squash every single night because uh, fresh vegetable. I don't mind eating the same thing for a while until I figure out what I'm doing. Because it's going to take a lot of cooking. I got to like, oh, I got to bake it all in the oven, which is going to be a real trick. And I'm just using this uh, um, corningware container to put it in because it's it's a, it's a bigger bowl. I'm not going to recook it or anything because it is already done. But it's not as um, um, uh, spaghetti sp stringy. That's it. It's not as stringy as a uh, true spaghetti squash. But it really has a, uh, a butternut smell to it. Well, I've got enough for two nights anyways. There's no way I can eat that all tonight. Let's just try a little bite here.
Well, it doesn't taste like spaghetti squash, but it doesn't taste like zucchini. It's something else. It's good, but it doesn't taste like either or. Definitely has a really strong butternut, butternut smell to it. So that's it, guys. The uh, high bread zucchini spaghetti squash thing that I grew by accident.